So warm welcome to scope management and schedule management. My name is Ramesh. I've done my PMP, then PMI ACP, that is Agile certification. ISTQB, you can call this as some sort of a PMP for testing. NCIB, this is my domain certification. Let's discuss about project scope management. What is basically scope? Okay, for example, I'm writing using this pen isn't it? What does a pen do? It performs set features, right? It is able to draw, right? And it supports so many colors. It has to be portal with so and so an application, isn't it? So it does some features. So that is what is called a scope. Then how do we deliver the scope? We come with a project. We gather requirements from the stakeholders. Okay, then we prototype this pen, then test the prototype, then send it to manufacturing. Then manufacturing department starts manufacturing the pens in large numbers. Okay, so the project management processes we perform, like collecting requirements, planning, scheduling, budgeting. Okay, so all these are called as project scope. So there are two aspects to scope, project scope and product scope. That is what we're going to see. See, product scope and project scope. Product scope refers to features for a product, right? Project scope refers to the project management activities that you perform in order to deliver a prototype to manufacture a pen. Okay, so let's have an overview of this scope management process overview. I'm um, in this process. These discussions are based on a project management body of knowledge. You call them PIMBOK, project management body of knowledge, right? So this is brought out by um, PMI. Okay. So the, all the discussions flow from this project management body of knowledge. This is a book, this is a guide how to run projects. It contains best practices, fine. So here you have a topic called scope management, knowledge area, I call that knowledge area. So how do you plan for scope? So these are all the processes we need to perform. First, we have to plan for scope management, right? Then we have to collect requirements. Then based on the requirements, we have to define scope. What are requirements? Requirements are what the customers expect to find in a product. Okay, then based on the requirements, we define scope. That is, we come with a scope statement that tells us everything that we have to deliver as part of the project. Okay, then we create WBS, this scope statement. Okay, in this process, we come with a scope statement and define scope. This scope statement would be descriptive. It could be in text form. Well, if you give a document that runs to hundreds of pages to team members to start delivering, they'll not know where to start. Okay, what the dependencies are. So in a manner that is understandable them, you break it down into a tree form. Okay, you break it down into tree form and you say, John, this is your work package, plan to deliver it. Jack, this is your work package, plan to deliver it. So in Create WBS, we break down the work into a work breakdown structure. Okay, and validate scope refers to getting the scope formally accepted by customer okay for example if we are prototyping this pen we have to get this pen accepted the prototype accepted by the stakeholders okay that is called as validate scope right and the last process is control scope okay control scope is a process of comparing what we plan to deliver with what we actually delivered okay there could be variances we'll see how to manage them this is about scope management fine now let us analyze these processes in detail one by one. Okay. So the first process is plan scope management. So what do we do here? We come up with a scope management plan. So what is a scope management plan? This is a process of creating, uh, I mean, plan scope management is a process of creating a scope management plan that documents how the project and product scope will be defined validated control define is how we define the scope how we define how to decide what features and functions it should support validation is how we get it accepted by the customer okay so it provides you guidance on how to manage scope that is what it means okay now there is a description of this process plan scope management see i was talking to you about project management body of knowledge of PMI, isn't it? It is what we discuss is based on that. So there are totally 49 processes in this project management body of knowledge, and each of these processes are defined using a particular template. Okay, these templates are like inputs, tools and techniques, outputs. I can give you a small example. See, if you have to make coffee, what do we do? We first use inputs. What are the inputs like? We have sugar, 
cream, coffee powder, isn't it? Those are the inputs, right? What are the tools and techniques you use? Stove, boiling. Okay, those are the tools and techniques. So what is the output of this process? Output is cups and cups of hot coffee, isn't it? So all these 14 end processes are used this using this are described using this familiar template that is inputs tools and techniques and outputs so this process is called plan scope management so let us see what are the inputs that go into this process what are the tools and techniques we use and finally what is the output that we get out of this process okay so the first process plan scope management okay well, the input for that is we are discussing inputs, no? So what is the first input? The first input is project charter, okay? Just in case you do not know what a project charter is, let me tell you. Project charter is a document that actually initiates a project, okay? So as soon as a business decides to commission a project, as soon as an organization gives an approval to launch a project, the project manager is informed. The project manager uses a business case okay business case is some sort of a decision support tool that organizations process in order to uh, fund a project okay a business case is put up by the business and once it is approved that business case becomes a basis for writing a project charter so the project manager conducts interviews with stakeholders and he comes up with a high level document that is called a project charter right it contains high level stuff it contains high level requirements high level scope high level schedule right not even schedule high level milestones high level pre-approved financial resources which later on becomes a budget high level risk okay so you have a basic document called project charter so that gives you high level requirements that will help you plan for scope in a much more detailed manner okay that is one thing then what other inputs do we have we have project management plan okay so what is a project management plan see there are totally 10 knowledge areas okay for example you have knowledge areas like scope management schedule management cost management quality management okay resource management risk management procurement management okay so there is a totally 10 knowledge areas right and all these 10 knowledge areas have plans for example you have scope management plan schedule management plan cost management plan and so on so we come with different plans with different knowledge areas and combine them into one big plan that is called as project management plan okay so when you say project management plan well it is a combination of multiple plans okay so what type of guidance does project management plan provide for scope management plan well you have several plans i can give you examples of whatever plans are used for planning for scope okay so the first one is quality management plan okay so why would quality management plan be important quality management plan is part of project management plan why would that be important see when we define a product we should define the quality specifications for the product isn't it so what is quality quality is conformance to requirements okay so when we buy a product when we say quality what does it mean it has to meet our requirements only then you say there is quality isn't it now where do you get this requirements from you get it from several places for example if this product is a regulated product like say a pharmaceutical product you have to go by fda regulations right or you may have some industry standard six sigma or cmmi5 so you have industry level standards right or an organization have its own internal standards which it consistently across, applies to all the projects so organization standards right right like this you have to talk to customers find out what the requirements are relating to quality and you have to build quality and you have to come with a quality management plan so quality management plan talks about the quality that you should build into a product okay organizational process assets what are these see these are typical standard inputs for any planning process see for example if you work in an organization okay you will be having uh, things like organizations culture or policies procedures you know every organization got policies and procedures right we have to go by the policies and procedures relating to product development right then you may have historical information relating to earlier projects of similar products that you can access okay these are called as organizational process assets every time we run a project we create assets 
these assets could be like information database right it could be defect database schedule database cost database all these are accumulated over a period of time so when you start planning for scope you look into similar projects that were handled earlier and you can use that as a uh, sort of an input okay then what else well you also have another input that's called as enterprise environmental factors what is an enterprise environmental factor see as a project manager when you work in a client's place or even in your own organization you must be acutely conscious of certain things for example uh, culture if you're working for a japanese client quality is a very important culture you cannot violate culture so you have to do a lot of Ishikawa diagrams root cause analysis okay or if an organization extremely risk-taking culture well you have to take big risk you should not mind making mistakes and learning from them okay so culture is one enterprise factor right when you say enterprise factor these factors are related to the enterprise these are factors over which we as project managers do not have any control so we have to adopt to the culture right then it also means infrastructure let's say you have to gather requirements well whatever requirements tool is available you have to use them okay at times you may not have anything you just have to gather using word word templates so whatever is available internally you have to use this and in input fine now let's come to tools and techniques so what type of tools and techniques do you use for plan scope management expert judgment okay so this is also a common tool what type of expertise well, you need to have expertise in understanding the product, no? Understanding the product, understanding the domain. You need to find out people who, are, who could be training your, your own team members with expertise, you know, that type of expert judgment you require, right? It could be sponsors, it could be customers, it could be anyone. Okay, fine. Then you also have another tool that is called as data analysis. Meetings with whom? See, you're defining scope so you should find out what are the product features that this product should support so we'll have meetings with a lot of people you will have meetings with marketing teams production teams operations teams sponsor customers 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 right so you need to have meetings so that you can plan for defining scope right then data analysis so what type of data do you need to analyze see if you have to define scope you have to gather a lot of data relating to alternative ways of collecting requirements should i have interviews or should i have questionnaires right how to create a product what are the alternative ways of creating a product what are the alternative ways of inspecting how what are the alternative ways of gaining acceptance validation etc etc so that is called as data analysis fine so now when you do this you get output so you have two outputs in this process the first one is called as a scope management plan and the next output is called as requirement management plan okay so you have two plans the one process but two plans okay fine so scope management plan tells you how to um, define scope then how to create one wb sort of this scope statement then how to um, lay down approval process how to get this scope accepted how to deliver how to get acceptance from customer and so on okay so scope management plan is an output likewise a requirement management plan see what is a requirement management plan see you cannot just straight away go into somebody's room and start asking questions you need to have a bit of planning okay for example you should first decide well which module should i focus on so you need to have some sort of a prioritization isn't it then you have to decide what approach should i have if it is an agile project the product owner always sits with the team is available all the five days so you will have just in time requirements if it is waterfall projects you will have requirements very intensive requirements at the beginning of the project and later on it tapers down isn't it right then you also have to gather metrics what is a metric for example you have to prototype a pen or yeah a pen now you have to say what the diameter of this pen is that is a metric okay so that's an example so how do you convert these requirements into numbers right then how do you manage configuration for these requirements so these are all the things you have in a requirement management plan so you have to come with scope management plan and requirements management plan fine so now we are going to the next process that is collecting requirements okay so what do we do here what is a requirement actually requirements determines documents and manages stakeholders needs in relation to a product what should this pen do well this pen should write 
it should support so many colors it should be ported to so many applications okay these are all the requirements that stakeholders have about a product isn't it so we collect requirements that is what this process is all about okay so let's see how we get the inputs outputs and tools and techniques for this process fine so when you say requirements what exactly are requirements okay so the basic uh, input for this is project charter isn't it uh, but before that let me tell you what uh, what are requirements say so requirement could be business requirements these are very high level business requirements like uh, we should improve our market share by 10 percent we should be the market leader the rate of uh, efficiency should improve by 50 percent turnaround time should come down by 10 percent very high level business needs okay so those are also requirements right then you have um, functional requirements what a particular product should do then you have non-functional requirements for example the battery should be working for six hours right okay there is a non-functional requirement if you're designing a website will the screen to draw within half a second so non-functional requirements quality requirements quality requirements refers to what are the tests it should pass what are the conditions against it has to be tested right then project related requirements for example what are the milestones for this project what are those requirements that you have to meet okay like this we have to gather a lot of requirements okay so the basic input for this project chapter again that gives you high level requirement for the product fine then project management plan why is project management plan once again an input okay because project management plan is a combination of multiple plans so that will provide you guidance on uh, collecting requirements okay then what else we have project documents what are project documents see there are two things in a project fine so it is either a plan or it is a document okay so any document for example you have business case before you launch a project you have business case business case tells you what are the high level requirements for a product that will guide you okay so then you have a plan called benefits management plan that tells you how to manage benefits okay so there are a lot of project documents so these will guide you in collecting requirements for example you are collecting requirement for a particular operational department for a process flow so understanding the process flow you have a process flow chart okay there is a requirement there is a doc document okay so project document is also an input fine then business documents uh, this again is a business case okay business cases it tells you the initial intention for a product it contains an initial solution vision so that becomes some sort of an input for uh, collecting requirements then agreements what are agreements see agreements are the agreements that you enter into with customer see when you get a contract let's say you're abc company you get a contract from xyz company to deliver a product so customer would have entered into an agreement with you agreement would contain a statement of work what is a statement of work statement of work is a narrative description of everything that you abc company must deliver as part of the project so it contains all the requirements so you look into agreements as to what you have to deliver that will be the basis for collecting requirements you have to go and talk to the stakeholders based on the statement of work and amplify the requirements in a much more detailed manner fine enterprise factors the same thing whatever tools are available in industry in in that particular organization you have to use it right for example requirements tool right organizational process assets you can use templates for gathering requirements that an organization gives you okay these are the inputs for collecting requirements then what are the tools and techniques expert judgment what type of expertise see collecting requirements you need to have first of all you need to employ business analysts who are trained who are who have specialized knowledge okay knowledge about what well they should have specialized knowledge in requirement elicitation then they need to have knowledge in documenting they need to have knowledge in business right they need to draw basic diagramming skills they should have basic driving diagramming skills like drawing use cases okay context diagrams and so on and they also need to have expertise in conducting facilitated sessions interview interviews with stakeholders and so on so as a project manager you have to make sure this expert judgment is brought into the project somehow either from the same project or from some other project you need to have expertise in all that fine then data gathering what type of data should you gather for requirements okay basically it refers to requirements so how do you gather data you can have interviews okay through interviews or you can have focus groups what are focus groups you have people with focused attention 
on specific aspects of a product for example you want to develop a website you can bring all the customers and ask them to get their focused attention on this website right or you can if you have too many stakeholders running to several dozens of people you can be kind of conducting interviews well you can have something like questionnaires surveys okay or the organization want to uh, live up to some industry standard so you can use benchmarks as data or you want to come with a lot of creative ideas you can have brainstorming for gathering data so data gathering basically refers to the ways in which you'll be gathering requirements so this could be any of these then data analysis so what type of data analysis well you have to analyze a lot of documents okay what are documents like agreements with the customer business plans right then what else then you have a lot of process flow charts you can if you have to understand the process you need to have you look into process flow charts then issue logs policies of the organization regulatory requirements rfp that you get from your customer so you have to analyze a dot lot of data in order to decide what requirements to collect then decision making so let's say you collected requirements and uh, stakeholders you presented to the stakeholders fine now stakeholders have to take a decision so they would have some sort of a prioritization which requirement is important which is secondary uh, in importance right which comes next they will have some sort of a prioritization isn't it so you have to present these to the stakeholders and they would take decisions normally decisions are taken by voting so within voting you have unanimity that is 100 percent of stakeholders may upvote right or at times you may not get unanimity you may just get majority more than 50 percent agree on a particular requirement right okay or it could be plurality in a plurality it is not majority let's say you have 10 people ten, a group of 10 it is divided like four three and three so four is not a majority but it's a largest winning block okay so these are the forms of decision making but at times what happens is the stakeholders may nominate somebody else to take a decision that is called as autocratic decision making delegated decision making okay these are all the ways in which decision could be taken then you also have you you also require soft skills to conduct facilitated decisions get information from stakeholders right then data representation how do you represent data you can represent data using context diagrams use cases okay and so on okay you can use you can also use brainstorming what is brainstorming i, I call it mind mapping see let's say you're gathering ideas relating to setting up of a library you just put library and ask people to come with ideas some somebody would give ideas relating to books from books somebody would give ideas relating to fiction science then romance okay then literature somebody else would be talking about furniture well different types of furniture so this is what is called as mind mapping around a single concept you organize a lot of data once you get all this data you put them in some sort of a homogeneous groups all ideas relating to books all ideas relating to audiovisual equipments all ideas relating to furniture all ideas relating to parking space okay so that is called as affinity diagramming you come with mind mapping and affinity diagramming as data representation so we have collected requirements so what do you come up with at the end of this process you come up with a requirement documentation isn't it see you come up with a requirement documentation see prototype is some sort of a mock-up context diagram refers to use case what is use case when people system and processes interact for example you are a bank user you access a banking system and a bank interacts okay you have people you have processes you have systems interacting so you can represent that using context diagram you call them use cases then you can prototype okay you have to present the prototype to the stakeholders and get a consent what is a prototype it is some sort of a mock-up so failures are quite common quite common in product development so you have to prototype you have to fail early and learn early okay so prototype could be a working prototype non-working prototype paper prototype evolutionary prototype any prototype okay so these are all the ways in which you collect requirements fine then at the end of this process we come up with uh, requirement documentation fine and requirement traceability matrix okay so what is the requirement traceability matrix see when you actually go to the customer to deliver scope there are only two questions he'll ask you where is the requirement right let's say you came with a pen right 
this pen prototype you are going to deliver it to him. He'll ask you, where is the requirement I gave you? So you have to cite all the requirements, one, two, three, four, right? And then he'll say, what are the mappings for these requirements? For that you have what is called as requirement traceability matrix. So you have to map the requirements to high level business need. That is you want to be the market leader. Then you may have to map this to architecture drawings, then database procedures, then for this particular prototype, you would have done a lot of tests, test cases, test scenarios, test conditions, test results. So you have to map it through all these and only then you're going to sign off. Okay, that is called as requirement traceability matrix. Okay, so when you collect requirements, you also stipulate what is the template in which you'll be demonstrating compliance with requirements to the stakeholders later on so that you'll get a formal acceptance. Okay, now we have gathered requirements. So what do we do now? The next thing we do is we define scope, right? So this is a very, very important document. Okay, so what do you do here? In a very detailed manner, you come with a description of the project and the product. You describe what the product features are. Okay, fine. It describes the product, the service or result, boundaries and acceptance criteria. Okay, fine. What is an acceptance criteria? What are the set of conditions that you must prove in order to get this scope accepted by the customer in order to get this pen accepted. For example, you may have to do a lot of testing. So it will stipulate all the test conditions that you have to meet in order to get this product accepted. That is called defining scope, right? So if something doesn't get into scope, it will not get into project. So you have to make sure you don't omit anything. So that way it is a very, very important document. So what are the inputs for this process? What gets into project management plan? Okay, so again, this is a normal uh, input. Okay, a project management plan, especially scope management plan. Okay, what is a scope management plan? It tells you how to define scope, how to control scope, how to create WBS, how to get scope accepted by customer, and so on. Okay, so that is an inter instrumental plan. Then project documents, whatever project documents are in input sphere. See, there is a document called assumptions log. This assumptions log contain two things. Number one, constraints. What are constraints? Constraints are limiting factors. You cannot ignore them. For example, budget is a constraint. Schedule is a constraint. Quality criteria is a constraint. Okay, you cannot violate them. So when you define scope, when you deliver a product, you have to have all this in mind. Within how much money should I complete? Within what time I have to deliver? What are the basic quality criteria I have to meet? Okay, so these are all constraints. Then you also make some assumptions about a product. Okay, so this is an example of project document. Then what are the other documents? We also came with the requirement documentation. No? So requirement documentation is a basic document from which you derive a project scope. Right? Then there is another document called risk register. So that also guides you in defining scope. Why? What is a risk? Risk is an uncertainty that could impact any project objective. It could be positive or negative. If it is positive, you call that an opportunity. If it is negative, you call that as a threat. So if there are any threats that could impact your scope delivery, you need to document them. You have to come with mitigants. Okay, fine. So you have to look into risk register as one of the documents. Fine. Then what else? Then you have the other usual inputs like yeah enterprise factors right so whatever tools are available you have to use them right for example you may want to have scheduling tool called microsoft primavera but the organization will only give you a spreadsheet you have to use it infrastructure any tools whatever is available you have to use it you cannot grumble these are factors over which you have no control then organizational process assets policies procedures templates for scope management okay the project files from earlier projects, all these will help you in defining scope, fine. So let's go to tools and techniques. So again, we have the same expert judgment. So what type of expertise do you require? So expertise in defining scope. Then decision-making, data analysis, interpersonal team skills. So what is decision-making? For example, if you have to select a product, how much of importance should you give to a product feature? For example, uh, you want to focus on uh, looks looks of a product right looks then safety then cost right so how much of importance should be given to looks 2x safety 3x cost 1x 
So you can take decisions based on some sort of a matrix like this for a product. Okay, then data analysis refers to alternative ways. For example, am I going to deliver the entire product myself or am I going to outsource some components for which you have no core competence? Should I go for Microsoft project? Should I go for Primavera? Should I go for skilled people or semi skilled people? Should I use tools? Should I use a combination of tools and manual processes? Okay, so you have to make a lot of alternative decisions. So data analysis is very, very important. Then interpersonal team skills. See, a lot of times while defining scope, you'll be meeting with cross functional experts, people from design teams, people from technology teams, people from business teams, operations teams, marketing teams. So you need to make sure all of them come to an agreement on all the product based decisions. So as a project manager, you need to have a lot of facilitation skills, soft skills, then product analysis. See what is product analysis? See, this is unique to engineering products. In product analysis, what we do is we break down a product into smaller and smaller components. See, let us say you have a table. So what does the table have? Table has got chairs. I mean, it has got a top and it has got legs. Now, this top, should it be made of steel or should it be made of wood or should it be made of plastic? Well, it can be made of plastic. If at all, it is not going to withstand a huge weight. Well, it can be made of wood if it has to withstand a lot of weight. So you break down the product into smaller and smaller components and you understand what value each of these product components contribute and what is the rate at which you can buy without compromising on the quality. That is, you have to maximize value, minimize cost without compromising on quality. So this is what is called as product analysis. Okay, so you have to do this product analysis. People, some people call it value engineering. Okay. Uh, systems engineering functional analysis whatever it is you have to do all this in order to define a product so this is what is called as product analysis fine then the output of this process we come with a scope statement okay fine the scope statement is an important uh, document that's the most important document right so what does it tell us it describes the project and the deliverables what are deliverables any work products they're all deliverables for example when you collect requirements you come with requirement documentation so requirement documentation is deliverable scope statement is deliverable gap document is a deliverable so you come with a lot of deliverables these are all interim deliverables then the final deliverable will be the pen that they're going to prototype so it defines all the deliverables it tells you what is the acceptance criteria how do you get this deliverable accepted by the customer what are the tests you have to do what are the test results you provide him then what you will not do exclusions that is also very important the list of what you will not do should be much much bigger than what you will do and that is also very difficult if you don't document exclusions properly you'll end up adding a lot of scope to your project which is very difficult to manage later on so exclusions then constraints what are the timelines within which you have to do well what are the budget within which you have to do all these things you have to document in a scope statement fine then comes other project documents that get updated over a period of time. Now, this scope statement would actually run to hundreds of pages. Now, you give a scope statement to a team member, okay, it runs to hundreds of pages. You tell him, John, why don't you start working on the project? He's a bit confused. What? I have to start working on the project? Well, I should know what I should do. So, tell me what I should do. Where do I begin? So, what you do is you create what is called as a work breakdown structure. Okay, I'll tell you what it is. See? So this is a process of subdividing project deliverables and project work into smaller, more manageable components. It provides you framework. For example, let us say this is the scope statement. You first break it down into phases. For example, requirements phase, right? Then design phase, then development phase, testing phase, deployment phase. Then from this phase, you define what are the major deliverables, right? For example, Requirement documentation is a major deliverable. The requirement documentation for what? Well, Reuters interface, then Bloomsburg interface, then interest rate interface, all the requirement documents, right? So you define. You come to the lowest, lowest most level, that is called as a work package. Work package or deliverable. So this is a process of decomposing work into lowest most part, that is called as a deliverable. Now you call the guys and tell them, guys start working they'll start working in a very feverish way oh 
my requirement documentation is writers is it okay i know you address this with john john will say well these are all the processes i must do number one i have to do a bit of research number two i have to collect requirements number three i have to document requirements number four i have to get a sign off so like this you decide you split a work package into activities and plan how to deliver this so this is called as create wbs this is a very important step in scope definition process fine so what do you require for creating wbs project management plan that tells you how to create wbs project documents they are requirement documentation scope statement then enterprise factors whatever tools you have available to create wbs you must use microsoft project can also be used for creating wbs you must be familiar then organizational process assets templates for wbs you can use okay and the output of this process is yeah the tools and techniques is expert judgment okay you need to have expertise to define the work decompose the work into smaller and smaller components okay that requires expertise then yeah decomposition is the process of breaking down whole project into phases phases into major deliverables and major deliverables into deliverables that is called decomposition we need to have skills relating to decomposition then the output is scope baseline okay scope baseline means let's say you come with a wbs you have hundreds of work packages in a project so this is called as a scope baseline okay fine what else do you come up with the next thing you come up with is project documents are updated fine yeah so that's about creating wbs okay fine so you now what have we done we have collected requirements we created a, a scope statement and from the scope statement we created a wbs now the wbs gives an importance i mean gives uh, an idea for the team members to uh, decompose this work package into activities and plan to deliver them isn't it okay now let's go to the next process validate scope okay now we must assume that you have come up with the deliverable and you have tested the deliverable and you are placing it before the customer to get a sign off that is called as validate scope there is the process of formalizing acceptance of completed project deliverables it could be interim deliverables requirement documentation design documentation or it could be final deliverable anything okay so that is what is called validate scope right is a process of formalizing acceptance of the completed project deliverables it brings objectivity to the acceptance process right yeah so the project management plan tells you how to, how to get this validation especially scope management plan then you have project documents what are project documents see when you go to the customer for validation he will ask you where is the requirement documentation i gave you sign off so you have to show him requirement documentation then we saw that we have to maintain requirement traceability matrix we have to do a lot of testing and have to map the test results and show the test results to the customer so that he is satisfied that we have fulfilled all the requirements so requirement traceability matrix is a document then quality report we have done a lot of testing of the deliverables so the customer is focused on what test we did what the test results are did we pass did we fail if we if we failed how serious this failure was okay so quality report so these are three important project documents that are essential for gaining validation verified deliverables what is a verified deliverable who verifies it team members what is a verified deliverable see every team member is responsible for inspecting his own work product if i write a code i must do unit test system integration testing if i gather requirement documentation i should get a peer review i should do a design document i should get it peer reviewed so whatever you do internally within the project team is verification you verify that the deliverable is in conformity with the requirements and specifications given by the customer and you put your stamp saying verified which means it is complete and correct and you can place it before the customer hand validate scope processes where customer gives you formal acceptance isn't it so you put verified deliverables into customer hands fine then work performs data see work performs data is some sort of a raw data see there are three types of data in projects one is called as work performs data that is it is raw data for example actual cost actual duration 
these are all raw data examples it does not tell you what should be the data actual cost should be compared with plan cost actual cost is ten thousand dollars plan cost is five thousand dollars so after data this is data and you get information okay so the information is minus cost variance of 500 dollars so basically when you validate scope the customer will ask you for test data that you have to provide then with all this what happens the customer inspects who does the inspection customer does the inspection right there is it inspects the results right and it takes a decision whether this sign off can be given to this product or not that is called decision making fine and the output of this process is well he gives a sign off and you call that accepted deliverables and information data is different information is different information is contextualized for example how many was accepted how many was rejected what is the amount of non-conformity the severity of non-conformity okay that is called information then change request see if the customer gives you sign off it is fine but if he asks you to redo if he says there are some defects are there you have to redo it then we have to generate change requests so change request is a formal request through which you ask for extra time extra money extra people whatever it is right and you have a change control board in the organization that goes through a change request and approves it okay so if your deliverable is not accepted by the customer you have to do some defect repairs for example you have to generate change request extra time extra money extra people whatever it is and get it approved the project documents also get updated in this process okay this is called validate scope now we'll go to the next process called control scope what is actually control any idea what control is see you have a plan and you deliver something you compare plan with actual and you see whether it delivered what you have to deliver or not see you have what is called as baselines i'll tell you what a baseline is january february march april may right example in january you should have delivered 10 work packages february 15 march 20 april 25 okay this is plan so what is the actual that you delivered plan january 10 no variance february 15 no variance march 18 minus 2 negative variance april 15 minus 5 negative variance so this comparison of plan with actual is called control process so you control scope you compare what happened did i deliver did i over deliver did i under deliver why did it happen you analyze it okay that is called control scope let's analyze this process so this is a process of monitoring the status of the project and product scope in other words how much have we delivered that's all right what are the inputs project management plan within that scope management plan project documents what are project documents requirement documentation for example in the month of march we are doing variance analysis we should deliver work packages how much have we delivered well you were delivered only 20. so requirement documentation tells you where you under delivered or over delivered right then requirement traceability matrix that tells you what are the test cases are supposed to do did you test for certain requirements which are not there so did it cause any scope creep all that you understand okay project documents fine then work performance data what type of data like number of change requests received number of change requests accepted number of deliverables completed okay that is called work performance data then organizational process assets like the policies procedures templates monitoring and reporting methods for scope variance okay all this and the tools and techniques are data analysis so under data analysis you have what is called as variance analysis so variance i told you short term analysis comparing plan with actual short term trend analysis there is one more tool that is called trend analysis there is a long term analysis so both these are done as part of control scope then what else do you get you get work performance information and change requests so here also you can generate change requests so that is called as a change request then updates to plan and updates to documents okay and this is about control scope schedule management is an extension of scope management in scope management what do we come up with you come up with a scope baseline so what is a scope baseline it gives you hundreds of work packages right let's assume is a work package now in plan schedule management what we do is for all these work packages we define activities that is we'll take one sample work package right 
we define activities that is let's say this is requirement documentation what should you do in order to deliver this well you have to define activities for example i will do some research first then as i do research i'll come with a questionnaire now after research and questionnaire i'll conduct interviews after interviews i will have a documentation after that i'll review and after that i'll get sign off so when you do all these activities this requirement documentation would be ready isn't it so you first define activities then you sequence them into network diagram what are network diagrams it is like this start so first research simultaneously questionnaire both can be done simultaneously let's say it is one day one day then after research and questionnaire you do interviews let's say this is two days or let's say one day again right after interview what do you do you document that is one day then after that you get a sign off that is one day isn't it so what happens this scope baseline gets converted into hundreds of network diagrams and these network diagrams are used for developing a schedule so what is the schedule like a gantt chart isn't it from this network diagram we can create a gantt chart it is like this you see you come with a gantt chart that tells you one day one day two day three day four day five day six isn't it so requirement research and questionnaire they can happen on day one then after both these you can go for interview then after the interview you have documentation after documentation you have a sign off so this way yeah it comes like this okay so this way out of a um, um, scope you develop schedule this is what scheduling is all about okay fine then you manage schedule you control schedule and so on fine yeah we'll just have a very brief overview of this process again you have to have expertise in deciding how to decompose work package into activities fine then what else then you need to perform different types of data analysis right so what is data analysis so data analysis and meetings so meetings with different stakeholders to plan for schedule right who could be stakeholders important stakeholders team members themselves who are the best experts to decide how long it's going to take team members they know how long a duration is how long an activity is going to take what are the risk involved in this activity what is the contingent reserve they have to provide for the activity everything so team members meeting with work package managers meeting with schedulers now all these schedules should be approved by people in the organization isn't it you have functional managers in the organization will be reviewing your schedule and approving it isn't it so you have to have meetings with different stakeholders the rules of performance mission that is there is a concept called earned value management so that is actually discussed in cost management so that tells you how to come with periodical analysis variance analysis is fine and let us help find where we are heading how to come with financial forecast how to come with schedule forecast so those roles are mentioned in schedule management plan so this is a process that gives you a schedule management plan okay fine then release and iteration length so you have a bit of agile combined here so it tells you what is iteration see in agile projects you have time box iterations what is a time box iteration well it could be one week two weeks three weeks four weeks five weeks why do you call it time box let's say in a particular week you plan to do a certain amount of work let's say 10 user stories you call them user stories in agile right now at the end of the iteration you complete only eight now what will happen in normal projects if you don't complete something on time you extend the duration you ask for extra time isn't it but here it doesn't happen you wrap up the iteration whatever you did not complain complete you put it back in product backlog and if that is valuable you pull it to the next iteration and do it okay so those are called iterations iterations are time boxed so the schedule management plan of an agile project tells you what should be the duration of the iteration and each iteration will have i mean several iterations will constitute one release for example if you have a major product push you will break it down into several iterations let's say you have one release this through this you want to have major product push major product feature and you plan to release it in several iterations so iteration one will create something that is potentially shippable and when you combine all the five iterations 
you may take it out as a big chronic push now what should be the release length if the iteration is one week a release will have five weeks if the iteration is one month the release will be five months so these decisions also you must take as part of planning for schedule management for agile projects right then reporting formats how are you going to report your timesheets that is about schedule management plan now we have to do the next process define activities that is we'll break we'll break down work packages into activities okay that is what is called as define activities fine so this is a process of identifying and documenting the specific actions that need to be performed to produce a deliverable you break it down into activities fine so what are the inputs project management plan that tells you how to do the decomposition find how to break it down okay enterprise factors culture structure any pmis any tool right then organizational processes templates that you can use then what are the tools and techniques expert judgment how to define this type of expertise you require decomposition what is decomposition breaking it down right and rolling wave planning what is rolling wave planning see this is a very interesting concept in waterfall projects we have projects that may run for 12 months 24 months and so on isn't it we cannot plan for the entire 12 months right now you would plan for short durations of three months or two months whatever it is depending on the complexity of the project only for this two months you plan in detail so the rolling wave duration is two months when you say plan in detail what does it mean you define work package into activities sequence them create a network diagram and come with gantt chart so that is what is called as detailed planning so the period up to which you have detailed planning is called rolling wave planning so you adopt rolling wave planning as a concept then meetings meetings with team members meetings with organizational stakeholders right meetings with schedulers and so on then output is you get a list of activities right that you have to deliver then activity attributes what are the activity attributes these activities have got a particular set of features who should do it how long it should take durations what are the cost for these activities right in what sequence it should be done which activities comes first which should come next all these are called as activity attributes then milestone list what are milestones milestones are significant events in the life of a project for example for a business analyst requirement sign off is a milestone for a product owner date on which you have to take the product out to the market is a milestone for a project manager budget checks is a milestone so if there are any milestones attached to activities that also you have to mention along with the activity list fine then what else change requests so when you do the decomposition you may make some changes to the plans and the plans get updated that is what is called as define activities the next one is sequence activities so what do you do here you create network diagrams okay that is what i told you isn't it so this is a process of identifying documenting relationships among various project activities so project management plan that tells you how to decompose scope baseline into activities and how to sequence them so what are the project documents you require you require a list of activities to be sequenced what their activity attributes are what are the assumptions and milestones then enterprise factors any pmis what is a pmis any scheduling tool that you use or any sequencing tool that you use right any work authoring system right if there are any government standards you have to adopt them then organizational processes project files templates etc etc you can use them precedence diagramming method what is this see when you sequence activities there should be some relationships between them based on should sequence no so this is one relationship you call that finish to start the next one is start to start start a then start b the next one is finish to finish finish activity a only then you can finish activity b or you can start activity in next activity first and then only finish predecessor activity so these are normally the four types of relationships you can use in coming up with network diagrams so using these network diagrammings uh, i mean techniques you come with network diagrams okay then dependency determination that is what we saw now right then leads and lags see this is a lead what does it mean let's say this takes 10 days and this takes 10 days it should normally be 10 plus 10 20 days 
but you are introducing lead in success and activity, let's say by five days. That is, it will reduce the duration by five days. It becomes 15. So lead has the effect of reducing the duration. Lag refers to delay. Okay, see, both, this is start to start. This will take 10 days. This will take 10 days. So both should end on 10 days. But you've introduced a delay of five days in the next activity. So to that extent, it gets extended to 15 days. So that is called a slag. So when you come with network diagrams, you have to use leads and lags, right? Then you come with network diagrams. There is an output and you also update different project documents. Okay, now we came with network diagrams. You must decide, you, you should get a confirmation about who will be working on these activities. And based on the productivity, you have to come with durations. Okay. So that is called estimate activity duration, right? So this is a process of estimating the number of work periods needed to complete individual activities. So what are the inputs? Project management plan. Okay. Then project documents. For example, you are going to come with duration estimates for all list of activities. The assumptions about productivity you have, right? If you assume that you're going to get an experienced people, you can plan to do it in 10 days. Inexperienced, five days. Semi-skilled, seven days. So the assumptions you make. Milestone, project team. If there are any milestones, well, the activity should end on that milestone, isn't it, right? Will the project team also tell you what type of duration you can plan for? Okay, fine. Then enterprise factors, for example, productivity metrics or the product with team members, they'll decide the duration. Okay, and so on, that's an example. Then comes organizational processes, historical duration. This is information of the earlier projects, which you can use. Project calendar, what is a project calendar? See, if an organization has, if a project is running on two shift, you'll have two project calendars. Three shift, three calendars. So you have to plan for schedules in all the calendars, isn't it? Then scheduling methodology, you have uh, precedence diagramming method, activity on node, activity on node, so many methods, critical path, critical chain, okay? You can decide what has to be applied, fine. Yeah, tools and techniques will be expert judgment. It is a common tool and technique, okay, right? Yeah. Likewise, analog is estimating. Yeah, see, it is like this. When you start a project, you'll have analogous estimating. What is analogous? You take an earlier project as an example, based on that you come with estimate, right? Then as you become, start planning for the project, you go for parametric estimating, a bit more detailed. You've completed one phase, you're going from one phase to the next phase. So based on the project performance of the current project, you have an estimating that is called as parametric estimating. Then once you have understood the work package very well and you decompose into activities, you have bottom-up estimating. So these are the estimating types. Analogs estimating, parametric estimating, then three-point estimating. Okay, three-point estimating is nothing but bottom-up estimating. That is, you have to take pessimistic, optimistic, most likely durations, and you have to combine with an average. You can come with an average. Okay. Then for this, you also have meetings. Fine. Right? A data analysis. Okay, you have to analyze different data relating to productivity, team members' product, uh, competencies, okay, and so on. Okay, so that is data analysis. Then finally, what happens? We come with, yeah, decision making. So once you come with duration estimate, well, the work package managers would be meeting the project manager, and the project manager would be settling these budgets, isn't it? Timelines. So that is called as decision making. Fine. So bottom up estimating is where you know the activity level information and you work it upwards. Okay, from work package to upwards. That is called bottom up estimating. Okay. Then finally, you come up with duration estimates for each activity. Okay, for each work package, right? Let's say requirement documentation. That is one work package, right? Well, that will take 30 days. You come with duration estimates, fine. What else? You also come with basis of estimate. This is a very important document. When you came with 30 days estimate, you must say on what basis you came with this estimate. 
was it analogous what is parametric what is bottom up what the plus or minus you assumed for example when you say i can complete the work in 10 days plus or minus 2 what does it mean i can complete the work in between 8 days to 12 days isn't it so the range in your estimates confidence level in your estimates all these are documented in base of estimate it is not enough if you come with an estimate you must also say on what basis you came with this estimate okay then what else project documents will get updated in this process yeah so we have um, developed schedule no and we have estimated durations for different uh, network diagrams we have to combine all these network diagrams and we have to develop one big schedule for all the work packages combined okay the schedule is for the project as a whole right fine so oh i'm sorry this is a process of analyzing activity sequence duration resource requirements schedule constraints to create a project schedule what does it mean that is you came with network diagram that told you what the sequence is then for these activities we decide the durations then you also decide who's going to be working on this activity john or jack or jill and you also contain constraints like within how much time this work should be com completed so you consider all this and you develop a schedule model so what does a schedule model contain it contains start dates end dates and who's going to be the resource using this performing this activity and if the resource is going to consume steel cement how many kilos of steel cement is going to consume everything relating to activities okay they are all combined to develop a schedule so project management plan is an input especially schedule management plan that tells you how to schedule right then project documents like activity list activity attributes assumptions log we have discussed all this no okay right so this is the scheduler's job right agreements what does agreement contains agreement contains the dates by which you have to deliver to the customer is it not important to consider that of course okay fine you have to meet the contractual stipulations so with all this uh, and also enterprise factors whatever scheduling tool is there in the organization they have to use it right then scheduling methodologies project calendars these are all default project calendars right you have to use them as inputs then what are the tools and techniques you do network analysis right that is what is analysis you you combine act i mean you analyze all the activities you understand the actors and sequence properly now the duration is correct all that you analyze right then you apply critical path method what is the critical path method determining the duration of the project schedule okay applying critical path method you determine when the work should start when it should end fine then you have a lot of data analysis relating to durations risks costs okay etc etc resource optimization what is resource optimization see when you come with the schedule it may say you'll complete the project in 12 months but the customer might say no i want it in nine months so what should you do you have to somehow extract some three months out of the schedule so there are a lot of techniques like fast tracking that is doing activities in parallel instead of one after the other or putting more number of people making them work over time and doing the job before time so there are a lot of techniques that you have to adopt in order to complete the project on time Okay, at times you'll find that resources are over allocated. For example, John is the only guy, but you allocate him 16 hours of work. So you have to level his utilization to two days from one day, right? So these are all the techniques that you adopt in order to develop a schedule, right? And any in information tool, the leads and lags that we saw earlier, then schedule compression, that is what I told you. Schedule compression refers to if the activities can be done this way. 10 days 10 days you see if it is possible to do it simultaneously so you can do this in 10 days okay so schedule compression then agile release planning this is for agile okay you have to plan for the releases for agile right and you come with the schedule baseline so what does the schedule baseline contain it tells you when the activity should start 
and when it is it should end it should start in january it should end in march and the actual schedule will be compared against this baseline you will have variances so baseline is maintained for comparison purpose schedule baseline fine then project schedule okay then schedule data any data relating to schedule like optimistic estimate pessimistic schedule optimistic schedule project calendars where this schedule would be implemented right then yeah project calendars plan updates change requests this is a very change intensive process so change requests are quite common okay so that's about develop schedule process then finally we have a process called control schedule so here we make sure we complete the project on time so you analyze what are the variances why these variances happen why did the schedule slip is it because you did not get materials on time or was it because of poor material quality we could not conduct or well, there was over planning under planning over utilization under utilization so you look into why these weaknesses happened fine so plan is an input project documents they are inputs organizational process any control tools they are inputs the reporting methods are inputs okay then work performance data okay which activity has started which has not started which has ended right then tools and techniques you analyze data relating to schedule find out why variances happen where did you under deliver where did you over deliver why did you utilize more time what is the problem with our weight planning did we under plan over plan was it wrong in coming up with assumptions relating to durations you analyze right then critical path method then pmas any scheduling tool and resource optimization what is the resource optimization for example, I told you know John might be allocated 16 hours of work. So you make sure he does it in two days. That is called optimization. Fine. And what happens in this process? Just a moment. Schedule compression. I told you know fast tracking, doing activities in parallel, right? Then leads and lags can be employed. Lead will have the effect of advancing an activity, isn't it? Right? If you advance a successor activity, it'll reduce the duration of the project, isn't it? Then you come with information why there is a slip page, right? Then schedule forecast. It is not only enough if you come with the uh, schedule. I mean, you, you should get, for example, well, this is the start date, end date. No, no, there is a variance. Now, if the variance continues, what will be the actual schedule? Will we be able to complete the project in nine months or do we require 12 months? That is called schedule forecast. That is based on information that tells you why this particular variance happened. Okay. Then change request. So definitely you will make some changes. You will avoid this uh, variance happening again and again. Why did this variance happen? Well, we thought that we could do some day, something in 10 days, but we actually took 20, 20 days. That is why this variance happened. Why did it happen? Because poor planning. We overestimated productivity. So I'll go change. I'll make corrections to my assumptions and next time this variance won't happen i'll ask for extra time okay they were called as change requests then updates to plan and updates to project documents yeah so that's about schedule management so see you all then thanks for being with me have a great day goodbye good luck